In this video, I survived 700 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is yet, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we built an amazing bird sanctuary, a secret brewing room, and defeated the final boss in the mod pack. In these 100 days, I obtained the best armor in the mod pack, build an armory, and encounter a lot of cool things along the way. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 700 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. Starting out on day 601, before beginning my mission of obtaining ultimate gear, I wanted to clean up the vines that I placed all around the bird sanctuary because there were just too many growing all over the place. Now that that was done, I was ready to begin my mission of getting a full set of the best armor in Better Minecraft, ultimate. Now ultimate doesn't have the best armor protection, but what it does have is a bonus from every other special netherite ingot type in the mod pack, meaning that it gives you features like wall climbing, double jump, water and lava walking, and more crazy things. To start, I already had three netherite ingots, 10 netherite scrap, and some netherite gear, which would make things easier for me. Still though, I would need to get about 250 pieces of ancient debris, which is just about four stacks of this stuff. The first thing that I did is get gunpowder at my mob farm, which I farmed for a few days, and then I collected sand in order to make a bunch of TNT for ancient debris farming. And so I started by digging out a tunnel, then placed down some TNT in a chain, and then got to the fun part, which was blowing it all up and once the first chain was done exploding I went around and collected all of the ancient debris that got exposed which was a total of 11 pieces so we had 1 25th of the ancient debris we needed after that I dug another tunnel placed more TNT exploded it collected ancient debris and continued doing this for the next couple days soon my pickaxe was low on durability and I was running completely out of TNT so I repaired my pickaxe at the good old enemy farm and I then had another idea for a different way of collecting ancient debris, which was to search all of the new structures in the nether. Right away, I found this kind of ruined structure and on the bottom of it, it had two pieces of ancient debris, which I scooped right on up. I flew by this kind of nether village place as well, which I've been to before, and they usually don't have anything in them, so I didn't really enter it. And while we search for the next tower to loot, I wanna quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, Honkai Impact 3rd. Honkai Impact 3rd is an anime-based action role-playing game where you fight through various enemies with powerful characters. The game has an in-depth storyline with a large variety of different characters and a full musical soundtrack, so there's a lot to adventure through. Two new characters just came out, the first being Aponya, who's a powerful sidekick that can inflict rounds of lightning on nearby enemies and make herself airborne. Her battle suit features a veil, thorns, and a butterfly tail that makes her look like she has wings. The second character is Eden, who's a gunslinger that uses her ranged weapons to combo her enemies in style. As a musician, she carries a harp that can help allies on the battlefield, and her battle suit has an elegant classical theme. There's also a new outfit available called Spectral Claws that has a cool, mysterious, and dangerous design. Right now, you can participate in the theme event Shattered Dimensions and get free rewards. You can get a really cool outfit called Gale Hunter, Golden Diva Fragments, and Crystals. If you want to try Honkai Impact 3rd out, you can click on the link in the description and use my gift code to get 30 crystals and 2,888 asteroids as free rewards. Thank you again to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back into it. While flying around, I managed to find a patch of these guys, which are just so cool. And I found a tower where I had to fend off for myself. And uh, then I entered and it had some nether wart growing on the bottom as well as some chests, which seemed to mostly be low level stuff. There were, however, a lot of piglins ready to come at me, so I had to fight them off. I then ran into this turquoise biome, which I think I've shown off before. And it had a nether fortress in it that I quickly went through. I found a funky tower after that, which was just kind of another piglin outpost. I fought off a huge flood of piglins and looted the chests, which didn't really have anything in them other than some meat and gold. Right after that, I looted another one of these towers thinking that maybe they could have some netherite, but it did not. So I, I really would not recommend looting these. After that, I hopped into more biomes. I flew past a sub-zero hypogeal biome, which uh, I think I've shown you guys before, but I just want to show it again. I then ran into another fortress and I did actually need wither skulls for the nether stars. So I farmed up a few weather skeletons and 
there was this little guy that carried a little wither skull, which is so cute, but it ended up running off the cliff or something, so I didn't get it. I then ran into this structure, which I think is like a bastion remnant or something because the place was broken up. There were a lot of mobs I had to defeat here and it was pretty dangerous, but I actually got a netherite scrap from one of the chests and the rest just had random loot and gold in them. I had it out after looting it all and I then found this. Have I seen something like this before? That's really cool. Oh, oh, it just died because of me. That's so sad. That was the coolest thing ever. I then found another one of these ruined bastion structures and this one looked a bit different and actually had two pieces of ancient debris in a chest. And so I continued looting structures, one of which was a big version of the towers I had been finding and it had four pieces of ancient debris in it, not a bad find. I also ran into another one of these huge nether mansions that I'd been to before. And before entering, I defeated one of these floating skull things, which actually dropped a wither skull. It turns out that these guys have a two 0.5% chance to drop them. I started fighting my way through the castle and one of the piglins actually dropped a piece of ancient debris, which I forgot they could do. I tried getting more ancient debris from them, but they didn't seem to drop anymore. I found a room which gives you gold blocks that I scooped up. And then when looting a barrel, I got this elixir of undying that gives you regeneration two, resistance five and absorption four really strong. I had to fight off some piglins in full netherite, which was fairly easy given my gear, and they actually dropped netherite gear. At one point, things got a bit more dangerous and I dipped to half health, but I was able to stay fairly safe. I found this gold room again, which I found in a previous episode, and I fully mined it up, but this time made sure to clear all the traps here because they exploded on me last time. And behind the throne room, there were two hidden pieces of ancient debris that I scooped right on up. I found this trapped room as well that literally blew up three seconds after I entered it. So yeah, good thing I was ready for that. Other than that, I didn't really find much at the castle and so I headed out. I found this lava covered structure that I mined into and this place had a library in it with ancient tomes, a lodestone that could be used to make a hypogeal imperium. I, I had no idea what it was, but it was made out of netherite. So I took it and there were pieces of ancient debris here. Overall, this place appeared to be another strong hold. It looked exactly like the one I'd found in the overworld, and I found this place with cells and blazes spawning in them, and while fighting them, I got something pretty cool. Oh, obtain a piece of a wildfire shield. Ooh, wildfire shield part, wildfire shield. Oh, oh, I can make that? That's sick. I found another library section here and got a couple more pieces of ancient debris and some enchanted books from it. I found an armory room that didn't have much in it and then I ran into a tripwire trap that luckily didn't blow me up. Eventually, I found an ender portal. So this was another stronghold after all. I placed down ender eyes to head home and the endermen were a bit glitchy in the end, by the way, I don't know why. But anyways, I headed home and took a nice nap next to ladder. And then, uh, some, something really bad happened. The worst thing just happened. Lattern just died. <sighs> I just logged back into the game. I pressed back to game, right clicked, just not even thinking, just kind of by accident, and I killed Lattern by dashing. I, I knew this sword was gonna be a problem and I forgot to take it off and it's completely my fault. Yeah, no, I'm burning this sword. Where can I go? Where's fire? And the nearest lava source and sword of abyss, goodbye. And so I burned the sword of abyss because I could not trust myself with it. I at least keep memory of Lattern by naming something after her later. May she rest in peace. Anyways, I had a mission to achieve and a lot of work to do, so I got back to it. I got everything needed to bed mine for ancient debris, which seems like the most efficient method, and I got to mining. I just continued exploding and mining out the area, and along the way, I remembered the shield part that I had gotten, and I created a wildfire shield. I thought that the shield might give me blast resistance because of its whole theme and name, which would make it a lot easier to bed mine, but it definitely did not. Still a cool shield though. After mining for a while, I ran into a vain goblin trader and he has a trade that converts four ancient debris to five netherite scrap, which essentially meant I needed about 50 less ancient debris because of this guy. I continued mining like this through all the way to day 614 
when I unfortunately dropped my pickaxe and fire, but I continued mining with my fortune pickaxe and even found a magma spawner. Eventually, my pickaxe was running low on durability, so I headed to the Enderman farm, and I figured it would probably be a good idea to recreate the silk touch pickaxe that I lost because I just felt like something was missing. I didn't have the resources to make it though, and I had some work to do. I mined and sheared sheep over the next couple days. I'm not sure why I didn't just get to gathering the materials right away, but on day 617, I finally headed into the abyss. I needed to drop phantoms that would drop phantom essences. The first mobs that I found though, were these little glow pugs that, that were quite aggressive. I fought off mud zombies as well that were fairly weak, but as mobs started stacking up, I started taking some serious damage, so I needed to take care here. Soon enough, I started getting debuffs like nausea and slowness, and I started taking automatic damage that I could not stop, so I left for a moment and headed back in with no debuffs to continue my search. I'm not sure why this stuff happens. I was having no luck with the search, but I did find this guy. What are you? Like a raccoon person? What the heck? Who are you? It's like a raccoon guy. Night Hunter, whoa. I searched and searched and by day 619, I finally found a phantom. Oh, finally, I found a phantom. Oh my God, it took forever. Let me like hit it with my looting. Okay, I dropped one. I continued fighting phantoms until I was able to collect a total of 16 essences, then collected titan bones, and was able to create the phantom ingots I needed to create a phantom pickaxe, and I upgraded it to a unirith pickaxe. I spent the start of day 621 repairing my other pickaxe and enchanting my new one, and then I also got silk touch and mending on it. To finish it off, I named it Lattern in memory of her. With my new pickaxe created, I got back to mining for ancient debris, and I continued mining for 10 days until day 631 when I finally had all of the netherite I needed. I was then looking for a goblin trader to trade my final stack of ancient debris with when I found this cool biome. Whoa, this is a cool biome. Look at this place. It's all glowstoned out. I have the glowing effect or luminance, I guess. Whoa, wait, luminance. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm making things glow. What are these mushrooms? I think they just automatically light up when you walk next to them. Whoa. Fungus and tongue stew. Ew. Here we go. My sir, my good, good friend, vain goblin trader. Boom. Oh, look at all that netherite. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Now, looking at the amount of netherite I had, I thought I overdid it, but, but I actually end up using all of it, so don't you worry. Upon returning home, I was able to make over a stack and a half of netherite ingots. Now I needed to get enough wither skulls to spawn 10 withers for 10 nether stars and enough to make 10 witherite ingots. What made things easier for me is that these floating skull guys can drop wither skulls and as well as these mobs called nagas, so that's what I mainly hunted. My hunt continued on for a few days and then i found these cool guys whoa whoa they're like they are nether bats i've never seen these before they're not even mean are they what are these guys what is this oh flying pig nope can't cage them I left these fellows alone for the time being, but maybe they could fit into the sanctuary at some point. Anyways, I continued on farming for wither skulls all the way until day 640, where I got 40 wither skulls and an extra. I then collected up some soul sand and finally headed home. On the next day, I wanted to spawn and fight the withers, so I teleported far from my base and I got prepared. Let us do it. All right, let me just try three. Okay, boom, boom. Boom. All right. Three withers. No problemo, right? All right. They're going a bit crazy. Um, this is not according to plan at all. Boop. Bit, uh, bit of a crazy one here. Okay. Melee. Let's see how melee is. I, I am taking a bit of damage. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Got one. Oh, here. Okay. Here they are. I can't hit it. Okay. And number two. This one's chilling over here. Number three. And I just have to do that seven more times. And so I spawned and defeated seven more withers to get 10 nether stars in total. Now I was ready to start getting all of the special netherite ingots I needed. Since I already had wither skulls in my inventory, I made 10 witherite ingots. Next, I made 10 goldite ingots, which were really easy to make, just gold and netherite. 10 enderite ingots, which are no problem because of my enderman farm. 10 blazerite with blaze rods, really easy as well. And 10 fantorite, which I actually barely had enough phantom membranes for. With 
with that, I had five out of eight of the special netherite types. Next, I wanted to make spider writing. It's using spider eyes, but I only had enough for seven. I figured I would have some more at my mob farm, so I headed there, but there were only enough for one more ingot. So in the night time, I had to head out and hunt for spiders. I found a spider cave as well that I'd been to before, and I farmed it until I had 16 spider eyes to make two more spiderite ingots. The final ingots I needed to get were featherite and prismarite, so that's what I focused on next. The first ones I decided to get were prismarite, so I flew over the ocean with my map looking for any signs of a temple, and soon I actually found a sea temple, which I wasn't expecting. I cleared out some drowns from which I got a turtle shell that you can make a spike turtle shell out of, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I swam down to the chests, and at first I wasn't sure if they were trapped, but I checked, and sure enough, they had some dispensers with potions in them. So I cleared them out, and one of the chests had prismarine crystals, which was exactly what I needed. I then just mined up the lamps that were in the temple, and they gave me the rest of the crystals I needed. I returned home after that, and I crafted 10 prismarite ingots. The last ingots that I needed were featherite. Needing feathers reminded me of the bird sanctuary we built in the last episode, but when I got there, I saw this. What? Oh, the did the sunbird do this? Who did this? Oh my no! What happened? Oh, what happened? The sunbird's facing in this exact direction. This is not good. I had to fix this before any birds left the sanctuary, and some birds likely already did. Well. Let me correct that because one literally flew out while I was fixing it. Anyways, fortunately that was the only one because I was able to fix it up soon after. Also, while I'm in here, I just wanna say thank you for all of your comments and suggestions for the bird sanctuary on the last video. I saw a lot of suggestions for things I should add. But right now we have the goal of getting a full set of ultimate gear. I needed to get enough feathers for 10 ingots, meaning I would need 80. So I set out to find some chickens. After searching for a while, I figured that I could also kill some birds for feathers because there were a lot in the pack. Oh, do they not even drop anything? They don't even drop feathers. Oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. Oh, they don't even drop feathers. I just killed a bunch of birds for no reason. Oh my. Those birds did not drop any feathers and I felt bad. I hunted some bigger ones on the next day though and they did. While flying around, I ended up finding this swamp village. Oh, this is a cool village. Hello. Yvonne. This is like a swampy village. This is uh, pretty cool. Look at that. Oh, we got villager guards attending to some duty over here. What's going on, guys? Oh, alligator. Uh-oh. Let me help you out here. Okay. Got him, guys. I got him. No worries. I was getting pretty sad about having to kill birds, so I decided instead I would just start a chicken farm, and that way I would at least be a more sustainable guy. I figured that this empty spot next to the cow farm would be a pretty decent area for it, so I started building out an outline, which I made using spruce fences, and then began building out the floor. Halfway through, though, I figured I wanted to use a different wood from spruce since I had already used it a lot, and I decided to use birch wood instead. I got back to filling in the flooring and started started building up the walls on the next day. The birch pattern is a bit strong, so I stripped the wood, and I think it fit nicely with the simplicity chicken coops usually have. I had to grow and chop down more trees throughout, and slowly finished building the walls up. I then added a layer of stairs around the top and filled in the roof. With that, the base of the chicken coop was done, but I felt like something was missing. After researching some chicken coops, I figured I would change the design a bit. I removed one half of the structure and I started essentially working on an area where the chickens would be while the house portion could be for storage and an entrance. I added glass panes all along the walls so I could see the chickens and this looked so much nicer. I separated out the house from the chicken coop, released the chickens and began breeding them, which I would need to do a lot of. Oh yeah, this is nice. <laughs> you know you know what this is nice oh man originally the only thing i had in mind was a very standard chicken pen like this or chicken coop but then you know i looked at google images of real ones and it's just kind of you know this is what i came out with this is this is nice while i waited for the chickens to breed i figured i would start working on something in the meantime and i had the idea to add a crater going down into our underground base which i think would be a really cool entrance to it so slowly i started digging down a hole in a kind of random form so it wouldn't just look like a hole going straight down and by the next day i was able to reach the underground base and finish the tunnel now i would probably want to design 
explain it later, but for the time being, I wanted to do something else. What I'd wanted to do for a while, actually, is upgrade my food source to something more saturating. And because of the mod called Farmer's Delight, there is a huge variety of new foods. After looking through a bunch of different foods you can make, I found this stuff called Vegetable Noodles that gives you seven saturation and an effect called nourishment when you eat it, meaning it's a really good food. Keep in mind, cooked steak only gives you four saturation. You can make it using carrots, cabbage, mushrooms, and noodles, all of which are fairly easy to get. I farmed up carrots and cabbage and still needed to get the other two materials. Before that, I wanted to make a room where I could actually cook this stuff since I didn't want just a random cooking pot lying around. And I just designed the room that I already had next to my storage system. I actually really like the design that I made. I continued the glowstone border from the storage room and filled in the floor with either planks. I ended up switching the walls from quartz to deep slate and then built the ceiling out of quartz. Yeah, I made this whole room for a cooking pot and I don't regret it. <laughs> I made this whole room for this one cooking pot. Oh my goodness. It's worth it. It's worth it. Look at this legendary cooking pot, amazing. While I was breeding the chickens on the next day, a wandering trader came by and I bought this new sapling from him called Purple Wisteria that was a pretty cool tree actually, so I was glad I bought it. After that, I started growing and chopping down mushrooms so that I could get them for the noodles I wanted to make. And while I was doing that, this happened. What is that? Why did that spawn here? Ah! Ah! This is a devil. This is a devil. Get away! Ah! ah. I can't. I like. I'm so. I'm just. I'm disgusted now. I'm so disgusted. I don't want to play. Oh my god. I hate. I hate bugs. I hate bugs. Ah. That was just. Wow. Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Um. I used water and wheat to make the pasta I needed on the next day, and with all of the ingredients collected, I was able to cook the vegetable noodles. While those cooked up, I figured it would be a good time to name our new fire dragon from the last episode, and the most liked name suggestion was Helios, meaning the sun god in Greek mythology. This name was suggested by Crystal Geode, so thank you for that suggestion. I think it's a very fitting name. While I continued to wait for the chickens to grow in numbers, I figured I would continue to work on the base and further the idea of the crater. I had the idea to add crystals around it and I had multiple types of crystals. The first ones I used were cobalt crystals and I made my way all around covering the walls with them. I then added layers of rose crystals and amethyst but I ran out while doing so. So I took a break for a moment and on the next day I realized that it would be a good idea to add hoppers to the chicken coop to collect the chicken eggs they would drop and that way I could breed way more. I'm not sure why I didn't think of this right away. I also added another separation and a wool carpet along the top of the hoppers. With that done, I started looking for more amethyst and I was able to find a geode on the next day, mined it up, and got back to working on the tunnel. I ended up replacing the cobalt crystals at the top with these aurora crystals because I wanted to have a purple gradient going down instead of just random colors and this actually worked really nicely. So I headed into the end to search for more of them and while flying, I flew into one of these specters that I asked you guys about in the last episode, and you guys told me that you can actually use a lead on them to fly to other islands, and it did work, so this can be pretty good when you don't have an elytra yet. I managed to find more of the rose, mint, and cobalt crystals, so I mined them up, and I found this endermite spawner right close by, which I looted, and it had a pile of diamond ore that I mined up. Also, while flying around, I was very much enjoying the unique biomes from the Better End mod. Very cool. Come on, like these bombs are just, <laughs> they're incredible. Look at that. What is this? Blossom berry. What is this? Look at that. Can I bring it in a cage? Wait, uh, hello? Oh, <gasps> I can cage it. Silk moth. You know what? Moths uh, are pretty disgusting in general. But these ones, they're okay. They're coming to the bird sanctuary. I brought them to the bird sanctuary, but I was sort of disgusted after, so I took them outside and at least they could fly around there. Eventually, I found the Aurora crystals and I mined up a good chunk of them. At first, I mined them with my fortune pickaxe on accident and they dropped these cool crystal shards that could be used to craft lanterns but I just like the crystals themselves. Anyways, I mined up the crystals and finished up filling in the top with Aurora crystals. And my goodness, 
it looked good. I also tested out using magma blocks around the top of the tunnel, but it did not look good. It did not look good. So I stuck with the Aurora crystals. I then added a layer of cobalt crystals. And after that, I had a lot of chickens in the chicken coop. I was finally ready to get my feathers. I made the featherite ingots I needed. And now I had 10 of each unique netherite type. With that, I made 10 ultimarite ingots. Ultimarite, let's go, boom. Wait, what? Oh, don't scare me like that. Boom. 10 ultimate ingots. I made 10 pieces of netherite gear after that and then combined each with an ultimate ingot to get a full set of ultimate gear. Finally, I spent the rest of the day enchanting the full set and by day 671, I was able to fully enchant my set of gear. I got full protection for unbreaking three, mending on everything and maxed out sharpness and power on my weapons. The stats on the gear aren't what make it good though. Check this out. Look at this, I got glowing. I can see through walls and I think this applies everywhere. If I just go somewhere, yep, look at that, anywhere. I don't know what the radius on it is, but it's pretty cool. Also, look at this. I can walk on water now. Oh yeah, I can double jump. Who doesn't like double jumping? I take no fall damage. <laughs> and check this out. This perk is not good when I'm at the Enderman farm, but my God, look at that. <laughs> I can magnetize items. If I press shift, I stop magnetizing. But if I don't do that, look at this, look at this, look at this. I mean, this is crazy. The auto smelting is not always gonna be good, but it does work. What I can do if I don't wanna auto smelt is shift, and then I can magnetize things to me. There we go, I can lava walk. Also, check this out. I need to build up there, no problem. Let me just climb a wall, yeah. Now for the tools, I'll mainly use my normal ones since I don't always want to auto smelt things, but I did put them in a shulker box so I can take them out whenever I need it. Now with my new amazing set of armor acquired, I figured it would be a great time to finish the armory room that I started a few episodes ago. I started building up the side walls using the same design of a spruce outline and filling it in with white wool. I continued filling in this design along all four walls around the armory. I also realized that I had another perk from this armor, which is that I can literally walk straight up blocks without having to jump on them. And this is really nice. Using my wall climbing ability, I was able to easily fill the wall in on the top half of the walls. And with that, I finished all four. I also tried filling in the spots of wool with different types of stone because I wanted it to look more gritty. And aside from the other stone types I tried, I found this material called grimestone, which I really liked the look of. So it sent me out on a mining expedition. I was able to find find it surprisingly fast and I mined up a bunch of it. And while I was down here mining, I actually found something really cool. Whoa, look at this. This cave really was amazing. I even found this crazy area. Keep in mind, this place was pitch black too. So a lot of mobs were spawning here. I just had night vision on. But while I was here, I found this. Whoa, what is this? What is this? This is some crazy dungeon. Whoa, what is this? Are they getting bigger? What is going on here? Renee's circulation. Find a plague asylum. Ew. Ew. Wait, there's so much gunpowder in here. Look at this. What is going on here? Take that. Do these do something? No? This place is really strange. Uncraftable potion. Shadowberry jelly? What is this? And there's a skeleton skull. I can put that on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bunch of redstone stuff. More weird potions. Look at this. Strength, slowness, strength, hunger. Like, what is that? It's a baby skeleton. Ah. Oh, man. Bad Omen 5. Haste, strength, jump boost, regeneration, fire resistance, fire resistance. This was a strange place, and I was very, very creeped out. These Plague Doctor guys kept coming at me, and they are probably the creepiest mobs I have encountered in this series. To make things even creepier, there was also an underground bunker area with bedrock, and it had cells in it. It looks like this is where the doctors experimented on villagers or something. That was pretty much it, so I got out of there, and while flying, back, I found this crypt on accident that had these skulls and campfires. 
terrible. I don't know what was going on with me. And then I found a wandering trader on an elephant that was offering magic beans that I bought because you never know when you might need some magic beans. Seriously though, I have no idea what these did. Anyways, I returned home after that and it was time to get back to work on the armory. I tested out the new grindstone on the walls in the polished and brick variants and I didn't like it, so I put it back to how it was before, but I tried them on the inside to see how it looked, and I think it fit perfectly. So I filled in the rest of the walls, and the foundation for the armory was looking good. I then added a second floor, and now I needed to figure out what else to add to the design to spice it up. I figured smooth stone might fit in well, so I started smelting it up, and while I waited for that, I wanted to try something. Now I had a lot of Aether Dragon Eggs, but I had no new types of Dragon Eggs. However, I did some research and it turns out you can place any dragon egg on a 5x5 five five of leaves or logs and it'll turn into a forest dragon. It didn't turn into one right away, but we'll keep an eye on it and see if it happens. I went back for the smooth stone through my newly created tunnel, picked up what I had finished smelting and placed it all around the armory as a border. The room was looking pretty dark and I wanted to try lighting it up using smooth glowstone, which is made by literally just smelting glowstone. Lucky for me, I have an auto smelting pickaxe now, so I just placed down all of the glowstone and broke it with the ultimate pickaxe. It fit pretty nicely around the corners of the room, but I needed a little more, so I headed into the nether and mined some up. The magnetization on the pickaxe was really nice because it prevented any glowstone from falling into the lava. I returned home and placed down the rest of the smooth glowstone. I then started placing down the armor stands and I also elevated the floor using stone tile slabs. I wanted another light source here and I ended up making these golden lanterns that I really liked. Now that I felt the armory room was fairly ready, I went over to the armor sets, collected them up into a shulker, and placed down all of the armor stands that I had gotten. Now looking at the room, I felt like something was missing. I played around with adding stone brick slabs, but it was pretty impractical having a block in front of the armor stands. And I then wanted to add pillars to the empty spots between armor stands, and I tested out a few different designs. What I ended up liking most were these blocks made of iron called iron plating. I added them all around the room, and I wanted to try a different light that fit them better being these Cincinnati sight lanterns, I don't know how to say that, which seemed to fit in well. Once I finally started placing the armor down though, I realized they were too close together. The different armor sets didn't feel special like this, so I needed to figure out a different way of placing them. I spread them out some more, and while testing out the new layout, I had a new idea for how I could decorate the room. I thought it would be great to match the blocks around the armor stands based on what armor was there. So for the leaf armor, I used leaves and logs. For the Naga armor, I kept it as it is because it is kind of a maze theme. And for the Arctic and Yeti armor, I used ice and snow. For the phantom armor, I thought green stained glass would be nice to give it the ghosty feel. And for ironwood armor, I placed iron blocks and jungle planks behind. I then built an area for fire themed armor across from the snowy armors. And I added lava to the floor, which was not a good idea at all. Oh no, oh no, oh no, how did I not see this? <laughs> I brought this completely upon myself. Let me climb up the walls, please. Oh my God, that spread fast. That spreads really fast. All right, so let us break this lava. Let us remove all of the lava, please. No lava. Let's not burn my whole place down, please. It took a while to build this place. Thank you. Is there more stuff burning? I think it's fine. I don't see anything else burning. Luckily, the damage was not that bad, and I got back to working on the armor stands, which were looking pretty nice. I added blue lanterns on the side of the snow armor and made magma bricks using magma blocks to redo the design on the fire side. With the first floor mostly done at this point, I started adding the foundation to the next floor with the same design. The last armor set I had was featherite, and for the background blocks, I wanted to use this stuff called chilu feather blocks. These come from a new animal called chillers that can be found in snowy biomes, so I began my search, and I was able to find a snow biome by the end of the day with a chilu in it. Oh, I think this is it. I think this is a chilu. Hi. Also, I found a snow temple right next to it, but uh, looting it did not go so well. Oh, there's a tripwire here. Oh, I did not know that there's a tripwire. No, I lost all the loot. I'm so sad. How do you even stop that one? Oh, 
look at this. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at them. They're all fighting each other. This one's like covered in snow. Now that I had found a couple of chillers, I needed to wait for them to dig something up called a frozen truffle, which is one of the four items they can dig up, and those can be used to tame them. I waited for a while, just walking around with the chillu, and soon enough, it dug something up. Oh, look, he's digging. Oh, frozen truffle. Oh, I tamed the first try. Let's go. I got a chillu. Look at him. Oh, this is my new pet. This is my new pet. This is my new pet. Come on. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I can put a sweater on him too. Watch this. Orange. Oh, oh he's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, no way. That reminds me. I need to check. Where is our... Oh, look. It actually turned into a forest dragon egg. No way. Let's go. Awesome. So now we have two new pets. The forest dragon and a chillu. I wanted to tame a second chillu after that and waited for it to dig up a truffle but it would just not dig one up. And I realized that I didn't really want to tame it. If I wanted to get feathers, it would be more efficient for me to just fly around and hunt chillers. While searching for more, I found a snow leopard, which is a really cool animal, but from reading about it, it's pretty dangerous. So I did not bring it to the animal sanctuary. I found some chillers while hunting, but honestly, I felt bad about killing them. And it wasn't really worth hunting them because I already had a pet chillu, and I realized I could just make a regular feather block, not out of chillu feathers. When I returned home and checked up on the forest dragon egg, this happened. Oh! Ha <laughs> Hi! Raw. Raw cod. Here you go, pal. Yay! Hi. Come on over. Grow big and strong, buddy, and we're gonna need to name you. As always, I need you guys' help with naming the new members, so leave your name suggestions in the comments below. Anyways, I made some feather blocks and placed them behind the featherite armor, and I think they fit well. The armory was looking pretty dark, so I added some pre-lit lamps around the area to light it up. And while doing this, I realized that I really needed to fix the placing of the armor stands because they were just disproportionate from each other. So, so I started fixing it up and a lot of boring work later, I was able to mostly figure it out. I detailed the second floor after that and then started working on adding a third and fourth floor as well. I started by building the walls up to the ceiling and then added a stairway. After that, I built a platform to separate the third from the fourth room. And then I noticed a problem. You see, the first floor was not of equal height to the second, which wasn't of equal height to the third and fourth. So I essentially moved everything a block down on the first floor and you know what it took some effort but it worked and it was worth it next i wanted to finish up the third and fourth floors and it was much quicker because i was able to reference the previous floors i already did the only issue i ran into was that the ceiling height was too low down on the fourth floor so what i ended up doing is taking the roof out and moving it one block higher which i was a bit hesitant to do at first because i didn't want it to look weird from the top but i figured that it wouldn't be noticeable once i was done with that I filled in the room design and boom, I was finished. With the armory done, it was time for me to start filling it up with armor. I figured for the ultimate set, it would be cool to use a lapis blocks background with netherite blocks on the floor. And while placing those, I found out about this. Whoa, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I never knew that this was a thing. Oh my goodness. Wait, so when you put another bright block next to a lamp, it starts doing this? This is so cool. No way. I tried to see if I could change where the lamp lit up from, but I couldn't really get it to light up from both sides. I took what I was given though, because this is really cool. I needed one more netherite block so I could have all three placed down. So I headed to the ancient debris farm to get enough netherite scrap for nine netherite ingots. While doing this, I actually took up fatal damage and my totem of undying saved me. So I had to change my armor out for my older set while I was bed mining because it gave me much more protection. Now, as you know, there's a lot of lava that falls down when you bed mine and I remember Remembered in this pack, you can make lava vision potions using teeth dropped by bone serpents. These creatures like to lurk around in lava and to help me find them, I wanted to make something called a straddle board, which is basically like a surfboard for lava. And I needed to find stratolite from straddlers in order to make it. When I was heading over home to brew some night vision potions though, this happened. How did my nether brick stairs burn? Oh, oh no. 
happened? I'm not sure what caused the wool and even my stairs to burn, but I was able to repair it quickly. I resumed searching for straddlers and eventually found some, took them down, and I found a random chest with mending when I was doing this, which I'd say is a good find. I continued to defeat them until I had four stratolite, and I then made a few netherite ingots and crafted a straddle board. I also put this enchantment on it that I had called the straddle jump, which would make it jump higher. Oh. 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 Look at this. Oh my god, I jumped so high. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> This is how you like make friends right here. Just get yourself one of these. The board was cool and I made my way around looking for a bone serpent. By the next day, I found one and these things are scary. They just swim around in the lava and you never know when they are going to attack you. I was able to fight it off fairly easily and luckily its tooth didn't burn when it fell into the lava. I got a couple more teeth and then headed back home to brew them. But when I tried to brew them, it did not work. Turns out you need lava bottles to brew this potion. So I headed into the nether, scooped up some bottles of the stuff and brewed up the potions. With the newly created lava vision potions, I headed back to our ancient debris farm and tried it out. But when I did, it just didn't work. It gave the lava a tint, but I couldn't actually see through it at all. On the next day, I came to the realization that it might be because of my shaders. So I took them off and sure enough, I could see through the lava using the potion. It wasn't as easy to see through as I would have liked, but it would still help me find ancient debris because I have definitely missed out on some that was under lava or fire before. Soon enough, I realized that I could take the use of this potion to the next level. I dug up to the surface and basically just started swimming through a lava ocean. I mean, I could see everything. And I actually ended up finding ancient debris right away. Unfortunately, I didn't end up finding any more ancient debris after that. That. Maybe you guys have some ideas of how this feature can be used even more. Anyways, I was done with playing around. I finished up my ancient debris farming and made all of the netherite ingots I needed for the final netherite block. I placed it down and added another lamp as well, so the setup was now looking good. As a final touch, I placed the ultimate gear on the stand and it looked fantastic. Now, with the rest of the room not quite filled up yet, I wanted to add some more armor sets to the armory and finish it off. I had this stuff called Cincinnati. I, 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 it's so hard to say that, that I could make a set of gear with, so I set it to smelt, and while that smelted, I grabbed my sets of diopside, cheroite, and pyrope gear from the blue skies dimensions and placed them on the armor stands. With that, I had three new sets of armor in my collection. The next set of armor I wanted to create was this griefer set. The griefer set is made of creeper spores and golden ingots. And if you're wondering what creeper spores are, uh, I was too, because I checked my mob farm and I had none, and I only had 20 in my storage. So I left this alone for the time being and instead began finishing up the tunnel. I used mint crystals to fill in the last area, and I also took a quick break to smelt up some more ores, one being corundum and the other penderite. And while those smelted up, I finished placing the crystals and the tunnel looked amazing. I think it's a great feature. Also, while collecting my smelted ores, I noticed there were glow squids right under the furnace room. I didn't want them to despawn, so I made name tags for them, including Cool Guy 1, Cool Guy 2, Cool Girl 1, and Cool Girl 2, and named all of them. And now we had the Cool Squid Squad. With my ores smelted, I made a couple pieces of corundum gear. I couldn't make any more yet because you need a void crystal for each which drops from a boss. As for the penderite, you need to combine it with netherite gear, and I did not especially have too much netherite at the moment. I was, however, able to make a full set of Cincinnati armor but not the tools, because it turns out that you need the stuff called nether reed to make them. I was also able to make the set of aquite gear, which is another ore found in the blue skies dimension. And I placed down all of my new armor sets. The Cincinnati site, I, 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 I can't keep saying it. <laughs> this set looked really cool, by the way. After that, I hunted creepers in the night, looking to collect creeper spores for that griefer set I had mentioned earlier. After looking into it, it turned out that they only drop creeper spores if they die by blowing up. So 
You know what that means. I had to blow them up with some TNT. Sure enough, blowing them up worked and I continued hunting them all the way until the night of the next day where I finally got all of the materials I needed to make a full set of griefer armor. Now this armor has a perk of giving you full explosive damage reduction. And I wanted to test that out at my ancient debris farm, but that did not go well. Oh. It broke my helmet in one hit. I was afraid it was gonna do that. It broke it in one hit. Uh... I can't say I didn't expect that, but the good news is, is it did block all of the explosive damage. So maybe it could have some use. While I waited for nighttime to hunt more creepers and recover my set, I went into the nether to search for nether reeds so I could complete my Cincinnati site set set. While searching, I found nether rubies, which I could actually use to create a new set, but I did not find any nether reeds. I hunted creepers in the night with these bombs this time that I made, and this made things way faster. I was able to make the griefer helmet soon enough, and my set was back to normal. I also used the nether rubies that I got, and I made a full set of nether ruby armor. It turned out I couldn't get the tools for the nether ruby set without nether reeds either, but I figured that nether reeds are something that could be found another day. I spent the last of my time creating a bone armor set with titan bones from the abyss dimension, which is actually really cool and with that our armory was looking good and day 701 was here also i want to give a special thank you to my patreon supporters if you would like my world downloads and exclusive discord access or if you just want to support the channel you can check my patreon link in the description